Um, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another revision lesson in my functions. So, the video is about my exponential functions and inverse functions, right? So, we'll start with exponential functions. So, <clears throat> an exponential function is a function that is in the form f of x is equals to b to the power x, right? And then the value of b affects the direction of the graph. If b is greater than 1, then f of x is an increasing function. If b is between 0 and 1, then f of x is a decreasing function. Right? If b is less than 0 or is equals to 0, then f of x is not defined. Right? So if b is 0 or b is negative, then f of x is undefined. And then they sort of have a picture lana. When b is greater than 1, we have an increasing function. And then when b is equals to, ah, when b is between 0 and 1, we have a decreasing function. And then when b is 0 or less than 0, then we don't have a function. f of x is undefined. Right? So this f of x equals to b to the power x is the standard form of the exponential function. There are other forms such as this one maybe you'll have um f of x sorry maybe you'll have f of x um okay okay so there will be other forms of the exponential function so this is the standard form f of x equals to b to the power x right so this is that standard form when b is greater than one we'll have a decrease an increasing function and when b is less than one we'll have a decreasing function right there are other forms of this uh, exponential function they are now transforming this standard form by either shifting it to the left or to the right by shifting it up or down over uh, or by reflecting it uh, about the x axis or the y axis right so the other forms that you will have transforming the standard form is f of x might be a times b of x plus p plus q right and then la pagu q plus p that will sort of be like a horizontal shift of p units and then low plus q will sort of be a vertical shift of q units right and then this is a this this a here that will that we are multiplying by is sort of like stretching or shrinking the the exponential function so these are the other forms that will come across but then um all that's happening with the other forms they are just transforming this standard form so if you know this one you'll be able to to understand all the other forms right so with this standard form notice Uguti, our graph approaches the x axis but then it never crosses or touches the x axis therefore we have a horizontal asymptote for the exponential function also, which is the line y equals to zero, right? Um, and then for this form, the, the for this form, the, the horizontal asymptote will be the line y equals to q, right? Let's say we are shifting this, uh, this standard form. Okay, let us sort of work with an example. Let's say f of x is equals to, 2 to the power x right so this is a standard function it's in the standard form right we know what here the graph is an increasing function right it will look like this that point there will be 0 1 right and then the asymptote will be the line y equals to 0 so and then now having let the last now shift this graph one unit up will our equation will now become f of x equals to 2 to the power x plus 
uh, sorry, f of x is equals to 2 to the power x plus 1 here. So now we are shifting this standard function up by one unit, right? So now our vertical asymptote will also shift one unit up and then this point will go from 0, 1 to 0, 2, right? So that is 0, 2 and then our graph will sort of look like this, right? So now to get to this graph, we are just transforming the standard function by shifting it one unit up, right? And then let us sort of uh, shift the graph f of x horizontally by one unit. Let us say maybe we have f of x is equals to 2 to the power x minus 1. Now this is a, a horizontal shift of one unit to the right. So now our graph instead of, so we, our standard function will shift one unit to the right. Okay, so this point will go from 0, 1 to 1, uh, will go from 0, 1 to 1, 1, right? From 0, 1 to 1, 1, right? And then we'll have our graph looking like this. And then you can calculate the uh, x and y inter the x the y intercept by letting x be zero. You will see what if you let x be zero, your 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 y intercept will be one over two, right? So this point is one one. This point is zero one over two, right? So <clears throat> if you know the standard function, it will be easy to work with the other ones, right? So yeah. That is uh, the exponential function. And then we also have inverse functions, right? If you have a, a function, you can calculate its inverse by simply interchanging x and y and then making y the subject of the formula, right? Um, like, uh, let us uh, have an example. Okay. Let's say let's say our function is f of x, our exponential function is f of x is equals to 2 to the power x, right? So this is our function. To calculate its inverse, we will interchange x and y. So f of x equals to 2 to the power x is the same as saying y is equals to 2 to the power x. Now to get the inverse of f, we will just interchange x and y. Where we see y, we put x, and then where we see x, we put y, right? And then now we have to make y the subject of the formula, right? To make y the subject of the formula, you will use the, the, the log functions, right? So we will have y, log 2 x right we will have y log 2 x so this simply means y is the number that we must raise 2 pi to get to x so if you say log 2 8 is equals to 3 the way to interpret this is to saying the power of 2, the number that we must raise 2 to the power of to get 8 is 3. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, but then um, the way to do it is you use log, log functions, right, to get the inverse, right? Then let's say maybe now you want to sketch the the, fa the, the graph of the inverse function and suppose you have the, the the graph of the original function so f of x is an increasing function and then we'll have that point zero one and then to get the the to sketch the graph of the inverse function you'll just interchange those coordinates so this is the x coordinate this is the y coordinate 
now to get the to sketch the the, the inverse function you will interchange this code in so this point will go from 0 1 to 1 0 so it will go here right and then let's say maybe we have another point here which is uh, okay let me pick it somewhere here okay let's say you have this point um you see this is two uh this is two three right then now <clears throat> this point will go from two three to three two right um three two will be somewhere here right three two will be somewhere here this is one zero and then now to sketch your function you'll just connect these two points right notice Uguti, the exponential function has a horizontal asymptote of the equation y equals to zero and then the the log function which is the inverse of the exponential has a vertical asymptote of the line x equals to zero so we are just uh, interchanging x and y <clears throat> okay so yeah that was sort of like an intro now i think we will be able to understand more by looking at the uh, questions oh the domain and range so the domain of the exponential function is x element of real numbers for both the increasing and the decreasing function and uh, for both the increasing and uh, decreasing function and the range the range it's all positive y values right so the range of this function is y greater than zero right y greater than the asymptote okay those are the domain in ranges so let us um, do a few examples <clears throat> Okay, so we have a question given f of x is equals to 2 to the power x. Draw the sketch of f of x equals to 2 to the power x. Show at least three points on the sketch, right? So 1.1, 1 .1, we have f of x equals to 2 to the power x, right? To, to be able to sketch, <coughs> we have to... We know what it is is an exponential function it has an asymptote of the equation y equals to zero this is the horizontal asymptote right and then now to calculate the y intercept we let x be zero then we have f of zero is equals to two to the power zero which is one so the point zero one is our is the point of our y intercept and then choosing other points let's choose uh, uh, let's choose x minus one when x is minus one y is one over two right and then another point let's choose x equals to one when x is one y is two right so we have the point minus one one over two and the point one one two right and then the sketch will look like this our y intercept is there which is one zero and then here we will have the point uh, minus one one over two 
and then there we'll have the point one two right and then our asymptote is this line the y the x axis and then we're connecting the the dots so our graph will look like that right so now this is the graph of f this is the point one two that is zero one that is minus one one over two okay so yeah that is how you sketch and then but in lapa one point two but throw on the same system of exist a function of the inverse of f so i'm sure you look to the inverse the graph inverse you'll just interchange x and y ulama coordinates right so last in zero one we will have one zero and then last in minus one one over two will have one over two minus one which will be somewhere here and then last in one two will have two one which will be somewhere there right and then connecting the dots the graph of the inverse will look like this right notice <coughs> the line the the two graphs are symmetrical about the line y is equals to x right so this is the line y equals to x it is the axis of symmetry so it is the mirror image of the function to its inverse so whenever maybe equation instead of saying draw the graph of the inverse but it draw the reflection of the function about the line y equals to x you know what a reflection of that function is its inverse when you are reflecting it about the line y equals to x right so yeah and then 1.3 if i write down the equation of f of minus or of the inverse right so we have our original function y equals to 2x to get the inverse we just interchange x and y and then we make y the subject of the formula right so now this is our inverse right okay <clears throat> um let's look at another example Okay, so Lanabati the sketch represents the the graph given by f of x is equal f of x equals to a to the power x and then but write down the coordinates of the point a right without calculating we know Guti, that the coordinates of that point is zero one right to be sure you can go ahead and calculate it you let x be zero when you raise any number to the power zero it's one so that's why we know straight away would be that point is zero one right and then 2.2 .2, but how can we tell that a is between zero and one notice the shape of the function it is a decreasing function so we know what the a has to be between zero and one right uh the graph is decreasing the graph is a decreasing function okay and then uh, 2.3 but it determine a if b is the point 3 1 over 7 so you have f of 3 is equals to 1 over 27 and then which means uh, a to the power 3 is equals to 1 over 27 and then when you say a equals to 
1 over 27 to the power 1 over 3 whose octal root a is 1 over 3 okay then 2.4 but it determine the equation of the graph obtained if f is reflected about the y-axis. So if f is reflected about the y-axis, we know that is f of minus x, right? A reflection about the y-axis. And then we know what that is. We calculated a to be 1 over 3. That is 1 over 3 to the power. Wherever we see x, we put minus x. And then uh, that graph will be um, 3 to the power minus 1 minus x. Then that negative and that one will cancel. We have 3 to the power x. Right? <clears throat> and then that, that graph will sort of look like this. It is a reflection of f about the y-axis. Okay? And then 2.5. But what are the coordinates of the point of intersection of the two graphs? Notice what they intersect there. So the coordinates of the point of intersection is 0, 1. Okay, yeah. So, there's a moving speed because I believe what this section should be, uh, should be simple or easy. Uh, the corner exponential function and inverse function are we call that challenging compared to minuses when the quadratic and uh, hyperbolic functions right so that's why i think yaki jima so okay um another example Right, but the curve of an exponential function is given by f of x equals to k to the power x and cast the y axis at uh, a at the point 0, 1 and b is that point that lies on the curve. <clears throat> right, and then 1.1, 1 .1, but it determine the equation of the function f. Right, to determine the equation we know what it's in the form f of x equals to k to the power x and then um, we can use the point b to calculate the the value of k right so when x is 2 y should be 9 over 4 so we'll have 9 over 4 equals to k to the power 2 right then k is equals to the positive square root of 9 over 4 which is equals to 3 over 2 right so now k is 3 over 2 our function is f of x equals to 3 over 2 to the power x okay and then 1.2 but the equation of the asymptote, but it determine the equation of the asymptote of h if h is a reflection of f about the about the x axis. Minus f of x is a reflection is a reflection of f about the x axis right so now when you reflect this graph about the x axis it will sort of look like this right and then the asymptote is still the line y equals to zero right so y equals to zero is still our asymptote and then 1.3 what is the range of h h now is this graph notice what this graph exists for all y values less than zero right they cannot be zero because zero is the asymptote right so the range is y less than zero 
and then 1.4 what is the determine the equation of the function of of g of which the curve is the reflection of the curve of f in the in the line y equals to x i mentioned what whenever they say um, a reflection of a function in the line y equals to x the reflection of a function in the line y equals to x is the inverse of that function so now to determine the equation of g we know what g will be g of x will be the inverse of f of x right so now the inverse of f of f of f of x is we have to interchange x and y so we have y equals to 3 over 2 to the power x right and then interchanging x and y will have x 3 over 2 to the power y making y the subject of the formula we have log 3 over 2 x so that is the equation of g g of x is equals to log 3 over 2 x okay i believe with this section is simple i mean yeah right inverse functions we've already spoke about that right inverse functions the inverse of a function takes the y values of the function to the corresponding n x values and vice versa therefore x and y are interchanged the function is reflected about the line y equals to x the function is reflected about the line y equals to x so a reflection of the function about the line y equals to x is the inverse function the notation of the inverse function is f to the power minus one um, okay and then some properties of the inverse function but the every point on the function has the same coordinates as the corresponding point of the inverse function except that the points they are swapped so when you are given a graph of a function to sketch the graph of the inverse you just swap the coordinates right the point the the x coordinate becomes the y coordinate and the y coordinate becomes the x, x coordinate like for example they say minus 3 0 on the function is reflected to become 0 minus 3 on the inverse function right any point a b on the function becomes the point b a on the inverse function <clears throat> because we are interchanging x and y to find the equation of the inverse function algebraically we interchange x and y and then solve for y that is making y the subject of the formula okay and then the to draw the 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 the, the graph of the inverse function we reflect the original graph about the line y equals to x that is the axis of symmetry of the two graphs right when you're reflecting the function about the line y equals to x you will simply be uh, swapping the, the the x and y coordinates right um yeah <clears throat> so now here's another example but you sketch the parabola f of x equals to 2 to the power 2 2 x squared and then determine the inverse of f and then sketch the graph of the inverse and y equals to x on the same axis as f of x right so here they do have the <clears throat> they do have the sketch of f of x f of x is that parabola which is which is which is that one and then the inverse is that one right and then the line y equals to x the axis of symmetry is there okay so now here are some properties of the inverse function of a parabola right notice Uguti, when you draw a vertical line with a graph a inverse function it will cut the graph at two points if i draw a vertical line here okay let me copy this um
okay so we have a graph of the of, of the function f of x and the graph of the inverse being it the inverse fun the graph inverse function this 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 shows us <clears> what <throat> the way this graph is is the way a graph is catching a corner it shows what the inverse of this function is not a function because if you draw a vertical line across the the graph of the inverse it casts the graph at two points right so the vertical line test fails which means the graph of the inverse of this function is not a function because the vertical line test fails so to have a graph if you want the inverse of a function to be a function you will need to restrict the domain right so for example in this function we can restrict the domain and look at only the positive x values right so we can only look at the, this piece of the parabola and then the inverse will be a function will only be this piece because it will pass the vertical line test where it cuts the graph at only one point so in the was a movie cuts a long layer <clears throat> but the inverse of the function is not a function check with a vertical line test there are two y values for one x value and not all inverse functions are also functions right and then but if an inverse function is not a function then we can restrict the domain for example we can only we can look at the positive x values from the original function or the negative x values right <clears throat> so yeah to make the inverse function we need to choose a set of x values in the function and work only with those we call this restricting the domain a one-to-one -one function has an inverse function that is a function right an example of a one-to-one -one function is a straight line whenever you draw a graph of the inverse of a straight line it will also be a one-to-one -one function so which means the inverse of a straight line is also a function right and then a many-to-one -one function is an inverse that is not a function an example of that is the parabola we see what this is a many-to-one -one function and its inverse is a one to many which means it fails the vertical line test so in order for this to be a function we restrict the the domain of the original function right <clears throat> so yeah a many to one function is an inverse that is not a function however we can restrict the domain of the function to make the its inverse a function okay and then um an example is the function y equals to 2x is a many to one function for two or more x values there is only one y value and then if you restrict the domain this will become the the inverse will become a function okay um yeah i think we can proceed to today's activity because i mean <clears throat> i think this simple this 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 section is is fairly straightforward um if there's anything that you don't understand locating it casually so far feel free to ask and be so casual but then i feel good it is straightforward ne? so we will discuss the equation yeah today right Okay. Okay, so let us look at today's question. Question five. This comes from a question paper like November twenty twelve. Okay, so put <clears throat> the graph of f of x equals to minus the square root of twenty seven x for positive x values is sketched below the point p lies on the graph of f 5.1 but use the graph to to determine the the values of x for which f of x is greater or equals to minus 9 
right so there we have minus 9 minus 9 is here so where is the where okay here we have minus 9 and then f of x is equals to minus 9 when x is 3 right and then when x is greater than 3 that is when you're going to the right of this cartesian plane notice Uguti, now the graph is below this line like a minus 9 right so so this piece is below minus 9 so which means we are only interested in those x values which will give us f of x being greater than minus 9 right notice where when we are going to the left you'll have the fun the graph of the function above this line lava minus 9 so the corresponding x values to that is the values 0 to 3 because when you exit 0 the graph now is below minus 9 okay so la 5.1 the x values will be x between 0 and 3 right 5.2 but they write down the equation of the inverse right so the equation the fun equation of the function is y equals to minus the square root of 27x to calculate the equation of the inverse we know what we have to interchange x and y right wherever we see y we put x and wherever we see x we we put y right <clears throat> so now we have to make y the subject of the formula meaning we need to solve for for y so i need to multiply by minus one both sides and then i'll have the square root of 27y and then i will need to square both sides i'll have minus x squared equals to 27y and then i need to divide uh this is x this is just x squared equals to 27y and then i need to divide by 27 both sides to make y the subject of the formula right so this will be 1 over 27 x squared so this is the function of the inverse right this is the equation okay and then see a 5.3 this is 5.2 sorry and then see 5.3 5.3 but he sketch the sketch the the inverse function and indicate the intercepts with the axis and the coordinates of one point right so we will just use the point p right to sketch the inverse function we know what we have to interchange the the coordinates of x and y right so this point will become minus 9 3 in our inverse so that point will be somewhere here and then here we'll have minus 9 and then somewhere there we'll have 3 right and then our graph will look like this right that will be our graph it is a reflection of this graph about the line y equals to x okay um and then 5.4 but he described the transformation from f of x to g of x equals to 27 x right so this is a reflection of f about the x axis right so if you say minus f of x you'll see what he, it will be minus f of x is minus the square root of 27 x right so that and that will cancel and will be left with 27 x this is a reflection of f about the x axis right reflection of f about the x axis okay and then we'll we are done with question five and then question six back to hyperbolic functions 
Tak. Okay, so we have question six. But the graph of a hyperbola with equation y equals to f of x has the following properties. The domain is x element of real numbers, but then x cannot be 5. Immediately reading this statement, I know what the, the equation of my asymp vertical asymptote is the line x equals to 5. Right? This is the vertical asymptote. Right? <clears throat> this is the vertical asymptote. Right? And then the range is y element of real numbers but then y cannot be one and then reading this statement again i know immediately what it is is my horizontal asymptote and the equation of that line is y equals to one right and then the graph passes through the point two zero they want us to determine the equation of f of x right so f of x is a hyperbolic function I hope you can see by reading this Uti, we have restrictions restrictions on x and y values so that is sort of like a hint to we are we are dealing with a hyperbolic function so f of x will have the form a over x minus the value 5 plus minus the asymptote plus 1 now all I have to do is to solve for a. To solve for a, I will use this point two zero, right? So when x is two, y is zero, meaning I will have two when I substitute x zero. Okay, sorry, I will have zero when I substitute x two. Okay, two minus five plus one, right? And then this will be minus one equals two minus a over 3 right and then <clears throat> um dividing both sides by minus 1 over 3 i will have a to be equals to 3 right and then the equation of my function is f of x equals to 3 over x minus 5 plus 1 and then we are done okay so yeah um I so today I think you be been kitchy man and because I believe the, this section is fairly simple and then opening is a sick trial and we are sort of familiar like this question here question lay five point one I think is Ceci 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 Solvega Nengi yeah you 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 would to determine out my value x for which f of x is greater than 9 or for which f of x is between whatever whatever and yeah i think looks as you can say which is why in kichima today but then if you cook on along as you six we corner um yeah feel free to turn both okay again um in time to call this any background noise i want to work is in i'm standing up and so yeah Gara sa so yazuti maybe ma will video wa irritated at some point. Okay, so yeah. Okay, that will be it for this video.